What I'm not gonna do in this video is take up a bunch of your time. My basic consensus is, wow. This is an incredible headphone and incredible addition to the Aria line. Not only do my own impressions follow this, but a lot of what I've seen, a lot of the responses to this so far have also been very positive from other people. I think that this has been a total slam dunk. Not only has it been a slam dunk for sound quality, I think most people prefer the looks over the previous Arias. And this is coming in at the cheapest launching price point so far at $12.99. People who follow the channel know that I have loved the original Aria for a very long time. That was one of my favorite headphones despite its flaws. Then they came out with the Stealth and as a brief history lesson, they changed over to some Stealth magnets from Heifman's higher end line, which they've now started introducing into a lot of their headphones, even very, very cheap. But the Organic has not only kept those magnets, but also introduced the substrate from the HE1000 into this design. So now it's working with different magnets and a different substrate than the original. Now they used to also use a shaded design where they would use thinner magnets in the front, kind of facing the ear and thicker magnets out the back and actually out of the rear it looks like they're using stealth magnets now rather than front facing uh, but they've gone to a thicker magnet design uh, you can see it's much more densely populated in the ear side now this has had a couple effects for this headphone one of the most notable is it's become incredibly efficient all the way at 16 ohms at 94 db being able to be played off of almost any amplifier and to be honest from what i've seen it's not particularly amplifier picky though that isn't to say not amplifier picky at all it's not quite to the level of being able to be fully driven especially with the the vast base that this can offer it can't fully do that off of something like an iphone 14 pro just yet uh maybe something like that macbook pro uh, with the high impedance output might handle this a little bit better. It's not quite to the phone level, but definitely to the level of like a mobile amplifier. Something like a Moondrop uh, Moon River 2 would, I'm sure, do just fine on this. Admittedly, I'm quite excited about this headphone and I wanna talk a lot about it, but I know that it's not gonna fit in one video. And I have a lot of things planned for this headphone. And one of them is going to be a kind of versus everything video. That's gonna be the next video I'm filming, comparing this to a bunch of different other headphones. So I'm not gonna be comparing a whole lot but there will be some brief callbacks to previous Aria designs just to set the stage a little bit. And that's a little bit of a spoiler. The reason I think this is the best version of the Aria is because you had this compromise when you went to the Stealth from the original. When they went to the Stealth, they fixed things that audiophiles were complaining about, like some of the frequency response issues, the high-end issues, the plasticky timbre that it used to have, and the mid-range honk, as well as enhancing the bass a little bit. But I noticed that the sounds started to miniaturize a little bit. They started to get that HD 800 effect and it wasn't nearly as wide. I don't have the equipment to measure this quite to the standard that other channels have really built up the standard to be these days. And I'm curious what they'll come out with because I wouldn't be surprised if not only did this measure the best, but from anecdotal experience from people around the community, this is also the best sounding so far. And I agree. And I think that's because not only did they do those frequency adjustments, but they also reintroduced the sound staging and scale that made the original Aria great. So this is a vast and enormous sounding headphone, but it is also a very well-performing headphone in terms of frequency adjustments. One major improvement that I think has been a benefit of the frequency adjustments with this headphone is actually the difference between sounding very close and intimate and very far away and kind of vast. The original Aria always felt far away and vast. It had a good cut through for the vocalists, but not necessarily a great cut through for things like the bass and really close treble focused instruments. Those bass notes and those treble focused instruments seem to back up a lot. And that gave it incredible sound stage, but it was kind of forced into that sound stage all of the time. This headphone is a little bit different. So a song like Billa Bossa Nova from Billie Eilish is an incredibly intimate track in every way. The vocals are intimate, the bass is intimate, the treble is intimate, and this headphone can really deliver on an almost claustrophobic experience with it, where it's very internal. And then you throw something like So Handsome Hello from Woodkid at it, and you just get this far out delivery mixed with the intimacy, but it can do both. So I really wanted to get a fresh take on the sound staging to make sure I wasn't crazy. So I worked with Courtney here to kind of kind of train her a little bit on what to listen for for sound stage. And I gave her a couple comparative headphones like the Ananda Nano and the Focal Clear, which she's heard before. This is what she's thought of the staging ability. And of course, I started with the song Mountains by Hans Zimmer. Hey, I'm Courtney and Joshua is not paying me enough to do this. Joshua is not paying me at all. <laughs> it made me feel like I was sitting 
in an auditorium with a bunch of people playing their instruments on stage. Like it felt, it felt big. Out of all of them, I think that one is the most clear. Like I think I can hear everything going on better compared to like the first one I did it felt smaller and less confined. Good word. The the instrumentals I can hear like each instrument is separated from the other one. Like they're not they're not as blended as these headphones. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows though. There is one caveat that you will kind of have to accept with this headphone that I think you're gonna have to accept with almost any Hyphmans. If you're into a darker, smoother sound signature, think like Sennheiser HD 600 series or a lot of the previous Odyssey's designs, this and really no other Hyphmans are like that. They are a little bit on the brighter end when it gets to the top end. So things above 10,000 Hertz really do kind of pop and shine and shimmer here in a, a very informative way. Now, unlike some Hyphmans, unlike the original Aria, it's not unpleasant. I wouldn't say it's too harsh and it doesn't really have too many negative consequences, but it might be a little bright for some users. So if you're really sensitive to bright headphones, I would be aware of that. Typically with something like a Moondrop Venus, I am sensitive to those bright sounds, but this seems to be under that level of annoyance for me where it's informative and it's detailed, but it's not overbearing. But mileage is gonna vary here. From a technical detail standpoint, this makes this headphone extraordinarily informative. Uh, you really understand not only the quality of the music that you're listening to, being able to really suss out uh, negative traits in recordings, but also positive traits in recordings. And when a bad track is played, you know it, but when a good track is played, you really know it. The detail capability of it is very good. Uh, the timbre flexibility, it's a lot less plasticky than the original Aria. The original Aria had a pretty strong like timbre shift into kind of a plasticky sound for the uh, kind of high notes. This and the stealth were very good at avoiding that and were able to introduce more metallics and more woods when it was appropriate to do so. This being the best version of that. I think compared to ultra high-end headphones like maybe Susvara, even though I think that this is kind of close to Susvara in terms of timbre, um, it's maybe a little off base a tiny bit if you're really specific about it um, a headphone like the diana tc is a little bit more accurate i would say but that's also an extraordinarily expensive headphone compared to this still extraordinarily expensive headphone but in a different ballpark okay now the bass response i think the biggest thing they've introduced here is impact and i want to talk about impact here because the impact of the bass response is good but the impact of everything is good but you really feel notes like when a drum makes an impact it's not just the bass that you feel physically it's like the high-end stuff that you feel physically as well like does the brain tingle thing and you feel like your ear is actually literally fluttering it's a very visceral experience and a very tangible experience on the ear and head front in a way that most other headphones are not now og audio was good for bass but it was never a bass focused headphone it never felt like bass was um, something to really pay attention to. It always felt transient and fast and transparent, but it never felt like they really focused on making it really good. And that has been changed on the new organic. It feels incredibly, not only clean and informative and still has that transient and transparent factor, but it's much stronger, especially in the sub bass. And actually Courtney, who we'll cut to in a second, who likes bass a lot, um, was able to hear like new types of bass on this that she wasn't able to hear with other headphones or other speakers that she's listened to, lower notes that she didn't even know were in certain music. And that to me is very cool to share with uh, other people. Didn't know there was bass at the beginning of that song. You didn't? No. Oh, yeah. I didn't. There you go. <laughs> I could hear all the string instruments. I could hear uh, violin and whatnot, and then the piano and all that. Definitely more clarity more color it definitely feels like i could be watching it at the theater it doesn't feel too closed in it will show you different instruments that you didn't know were in a song do you think the like double the price difference is worth it yeah you do that much yeah. better yeah they're just not as good they just can't they can't beat these ones i'm gonna contradict myself on the last episode i'm sticking with my six out of ten for those ones okay these ones are a nine. 
smart to give yourself an out next time. Yeah. So you're always yeah. Out. <laughs> so yeah, obviously she's very complimentary of this headphone and I too think it's very, very good. The mid-range is exceptional most of the time. It actually is a lot warmer than I think a lot of other Heifmans have been, um, but it does have that cut through effect in some of the uh, really high vocalist notes where it starts introducing a little bit of that Heifman treble. But then they also have this full body and soul that I think is even further than what the Stealth Aria was. And it starts to introduce the vocalist even more than previous examples. It's not quite as focused and not quite as warm as like an HD 600, but it's getting to that level. And uh, that mixture with the sound staging is a really incredible experience. I'll have more to say on this on the organic versus everything video, by the way. Something that audiophiles will love is the overall dynamic capability of this headphone is actually really great. And so on these really dynamic amplifiers, uh, this it was a, a very pleasing experience um, if you're somebody who likes really getting up there in volume, but also hearing those quiet notes and you like that diversity, uh, the dynamics on this headphone are one of the best at the price point, if not the best. It's very good. So my conclusion, it's overly complimentary. This is in a clear running for headphone of the year. It will be extremely difficult, in my opinion, to beat this. Um, if you are even remotely considering spending this much on a headphone, this is the one that I would get. It's exceptional. That Focal Clear is a great headphone, but it's much warmer. It's not as detailed. It doesn't quite have the sound staging capability, but somebody else might be into that warmer, smoother sound signature. This is a very audiophile focused headphone. It's got incredible dynamics. It has what I assume is going to be a good frequency response, though maybe a tiny bit on the brighter side, but it does that while being amazingly wide and vast sounding, also personal sounding, and also having an emphasis on mid-range and bass response. So it's an exceedingly good overall headphone with only a few downsides, which at this price point actually beats a lot of stuff. So yes, I am hyped about this headphone. I think a lot of people should be hyped about this headphone. It's very, very good. Why don't you rank which one you think is least expensive to most expensive? Least expensive to most expensive. And how much they are. Uh, those ones are the least expensive. These ones I think are next. I think these ones are gonna be like 2,500. And then I think these ones are the most expensive. And I think they're gonna be like four. Thousand. Yeah. Dollars. Well, you gave me a pair of headphones that was five one time, so I'm expecting the most. All right, so those are 600 and those are like 1300. Okay, well, I thought these would be more expensive because like... Yeah, why, why do you think they'd be more? Because these ones feel more plasticky and these ones don't. Like it took longer to design and make them. I don't know, these ones just feel... sturdier. That was so much fun and was an hour and a half of my life I'm never gonna get back. So, <laughs> goodbye. <Just> whatever you want. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, turn the camera off. <laughs>